In this video, I want to go over a winning trade that I took, and I also want to go over a losing trade describing when it's the best time to sell a position and the only time I will sell a position, whether it be a win or a loss. I want to break down the charts, my thought process, what I did right, what I did wrong, and I'm also going to go into a concept that I will be talking about in depth on my next YouTube video after this one. I actually recorded it and I didn't want the video to go to waste. So it's going to be more in depth, a little unorganized, but there's a lot of gems and good information. So definitely subscribe and wait for this video to come out at some point the following week. But it's going to go over when I sell a position. And there's basically two different ways or only ways I will sell a position. And this is going to help you all out in staying in trades and only exiting when you should be exiting. The only way I sell a position is if my target hits or my stop loss triggers. Everything else in between is noise. And in the two trades I'm going to explain in this video that I took, one, I followed this perfectly. And the other, I did not listen to my own advice. I didn't do this and I paid for the results with a losing trade. So I'm confident this video is going to help out. I'm also going to post a link in the description below for my Instagram at investitrade. I definitely recommend following me on here. I post daily trading recaps and very good trading tips and tricks that I guarantee you're not going to find anywhere else. Link is in the description below. You're missing out if you're not following it. But now let's get right into the charts. To understand this trade a little more, I want to go over the pre-market plan. I post these every single day in my Discord, setups I'm watching, levels I'm looking out for, and the Discord is available for invested trade members only. Now this was a very simple setup. It was a key level breakout. And what I was watching for was on the S&P 500, the 3831 demand zone where I'm hovering my cursor over now to hold. And I would want to gauge the strength from buyers above 3870, which is this bright green line on my chart. If validated and I see proper confirmation, I'm open to playing longs here as there's minimal resistance or supply until 3900 and 3913 supply, which could be used as a target. I have them both put on my charts. So where I got 3870, uh, 3870 from was actually a high from June 28th, this previous little high over here, multiple different levels of confluence. It also lined up with the previous day's high. And at the previous day's high, if we were watching the time and sales going into end of day, there were some very heavy volume near the highs with very aggressive buyers buying, getting bought, uh, sold to from very passive sellers on the offer. So there was a lot of volume activity here. And it was safe to say that if we could get above 3870, then we don't have anything stopping us until 3900 and 3913. So this is kind of my area of interest. I wanted price to bounce off of this demand zone. And I also wanted to see and gauge the strength from buyers above this area of my key level at 3870 because this was an important area of interest. If we got strong buying above 3870, I knew that from a from a market structure standpoint that between 3870 over here to 3900 and 3913, there was nothing, absolutely no supply, no resistance, that if we could get above 3870 with strong buying, that there was nothing stopping a strong rally into those levels and I wanted to use it as a target. So I'm combining supply and demand with price and volume analysis. And I will say, I am not a fan of trading the open. I view it as a gamble. Some have great success with it. I find I get faked out more often than not. And I would say 95% of my trades do not come within the first five minutes. But this trade did because I saw something that really interested me above 3870. So I'm just going to show you the chart. And we did break above that level. We did have very strong buying volume above 3870. And this is where I played the market long for a couple of reasons here. The first reason, I don't have a live recording of the time and sales and level two, but I do have a recording of book map. So what we have on my charts here is a historical or in real time, because I recorded this action, Level two in time and sales, every bubble represents a market buy or sell order. 
and every uh, dark orange or red line indicates liquidity, passive orders on the offer or the bid. So what we're going to have here is the market broke above 3870 and I do not get long above my key levels automatically. I must wait for price and volume to kind of confirm it. Give me something that I could enter where my risk is defined. And in this case, what we're going to see here is the level wasn't 3870. I'm going to go to a, actually, yeah, I'm going to go to a one minute chart and you're going to see this a little bit better. The level wasn't 3870. The level, once we broke above that was 3875. And what I liked here was once we broke above 3870, we pulled back, retested old resistance. Those buyers bidded the market higher. They defended it. They supported it. And once I saw that, and then the market attempt to go up and break a very large hidden seller at 3875, this is when I became interested. And this is when I started to take the market long. In the intraday commentary tab, this is where I update my thoughts throughout the day, what I'm watching in real time. I said there's a large hidden seller at 3875. Over 2,200 lots hit the offer, yet price could not move any higher. Think of it as a ceiling, think of it as resistance. If we get above that, then there's a good chance if it's fueled by more buying, we are gonna continue higher. I said we must get above this level, and as long as 3870 holds, there's absolutely no reason to worry for longs. So what's gonna happen here is, I'm gonna show you when I got long. So right now there's only 400 lots which hit the offer, and now we're gonna have a very large market buy order. Now 1,100 lots, 1,200 lots which just hit the offer, meaning 1,200, 1,300 aggressive market buy orders hit the market at 3,875, yet price could not get above this level. There was a very large seller defending 3,875. Now I have this in my head and I put the pieces together. I'm not gonna get short, I'm not gonna get long right away. I'm gonna wait for the market to present an opportunity that it defines my risk, it gives me structure, that I could play the market long, anticipating a 3875 break because I knew if buyers really showed interest, like I said from the pre-market plan, we have nothing stopping a rally into 3900. So the market quickly dipped and at 9.33, right here, as we start moving up to 3.875, I got long anticipating that we were going to break 3.875. I didn't get long waiting for that level to break. I got long in speculation that we were going to break. My odds of it working out are a little smaller, but my risk is much, much smaller because at this point, I'm risking 3.869, 3.866, or six, eight. So I'm really risking about five points to make about 25 points. Very, very good risk to reward. If the trade did not go in my favor, it would have been a very small loss. And at this point, I'm going to screenshot uh, the chart. You'll see me using the snipping tool to post in the chat room. Right here, I screenshot it. Over 2,200 lots hit the offer. We still can't get above it. And if we are not in long, Watch as soon as we break it. Now over 4,600 lots. Someone do the math on that of a very large seller that was present in the market. As soon as we break it, if you didn't get in long, you have to enter without hesitating, without thinking, without loading up your order. You just have to get in because if you wait, you're going to be skewing your risk to reward and the trade may not be worth it if you're buying after an extended rally. So once I saw this very strong buying after that break, I was very confident that we were going to continue moving higher now that we're above 3870, above 3875, strong buyers factored into the market, and we had very aggressive buyers. On top of all this, this was the cherry on the cake, was I was watching market leading equities, and this gave me basically my final confirmation. So what I was watching for was on the right here, I'm actually going to maximize this. I was watching Tesla. Tesla, we were watching a key level at the $700 whole mark. And as long as we could get above 710 and the market is strong, I'm going to be open to longs. Target was the three, the 733 supply zone, which hit perfectly end of day. I did not play Tesla because I was in this ES and spy call all day long or all morning long. Uh, but this setup worked out perfectly. Tesla worked. And Apple worked out. We were watching the 143.25 key level. So we had Tesla, 
we had pull this up here uh apple right here the 143 26 key level was the lower day and we bounced at it with very strong buying and we also had amazon which bounced off demand and started rallying within the first five ten minutes so i had buyers on the tape I had market leading equities, very strong. I also had NASDAQ. I could pull up that plan and show you that worked out very well. I had a lot of different things all aligning that really put the odds in my favor to be a buyer. That was my final piece of confirmation that made me comfortable for entering this trade. I saw the strong buyers on the tape. Now I'm in this position uh, and I was monitoring book math basically all the time. So this is what it looked like on the chart. 3875 right here. Here was the strong break above it. And then we start continuing moving higher. Now, remember what I said earlier in the video about there are only two ways that I sell a position. Before I enter a trade, I have a predetermined stop loss in play and I have a predetermined target in play. Everything else in between is noise. The market's not going to rip up to my target. And it's not going to automatically hit it in the next five minutes. You know, it's possible, but the odds of it happening and the market to work in my favor with a perfect world and do exactly as I want it to do, most of the time it's not going to happen. So as a human and our emotions, they're going to get in the way. I can guarantee you if you follow this rule of thumb, depending on how you trade. And in my next video, I talk about basically collecting data to what works for you the best. And I give you different scenarios. Like I said, definitely keep an eye on that video. It should be coming, uh, I don't know, pretty soon by the time you're watching this. But I say collect data and what works for you the best. Tweak this a little bit to make it work even better. So I will only sell if my target hits or my stop loss triggers. That's how I trade. That's what works for me. That's how I keep my emotions out of the market as best as I can. So a lot of people are going to see this, right? Let's just say we got in long above, well, let's just say we got in long at 9.33 when I did right here. I'm in long right here, right? A lot of people are going to see these two red candles. They're going to say, oh, you know, we're, we're not that close to target. I'm scared. I'm up a thousand bucks. I, I don't want to lose my thousand bucks. I want to protect myself. I don't want to feel pain. I don't want to have another red trade because I'm consistently having red trades. So what do they do? They see a little red, they freak out, they sell their position. Me, I could only sell if my target hits or my stop loss triggers. In fact, in the Discord, I was basically updating my whole thought process throughout this trade. And I said, as long as Tesla could get above 710, Apple continue strength, uh, Facebook could get above 171, we have no reason to worry as long as 3870 holds and the 3900 target is not out of the picture. I'm basically walking through this trade and Everybody that's listening or watching this commentary can understand my thoughts in real time. I said, if you did not get long, I don't see a valid reason to chase here at the highs. Your risk to reward is skewed. You want to make sure that your risk is much smaller than your reward. And I said, from an intraday perspective, there's no resistance or supply until 3,900. The only way this could, could, pull, could pull back is if sellers step in intraday and something happens on the tape indicating a red flag that the market may reverse. Otherwise, as long as we're above 3870, there is no reason to worry about 3900. The market should act as very tough supply and the market may find very tough resistance to get above. And if you've seen Friday's action, this supply zone at 39313 worked out perfectly on Friday, uh, July 8th. I said there's only two ways that I sell a position. I had my stop loss in play. Uh, the market was moving slow. We're still a few points above 3,900. Now, what happens here is the market starts coming up, right? We're putting in higher highs, higher lows consistently, and then we get a quick dip. Now, a lot of people are gonna see this dip, right? Aggressive sell candle about 10 points, and they're gonna freak out. Believe me, I would have freaked out if I didn't have this in my head, and if I was a beginner trader, with not proper education or experience and screen time. I would probably get out of this position on this dip to protect myself because at one point, let's just say I was up 10 grand over here, this pullback, I might only be up three grand and I might want to protect myself. But that's the wrong way to trade. My stop loss never triggered 
and my target never triggered. So I'm in this position and my stop loss at this point is 3869, 3870 uh, from my entry down here. So no reason to panic. Then we start moving up and we start consolidating. We break the high and we don't really move. We're about four points away from the 3900 target. And at this point, I'm in this trade for about two hours and it's very frustrating because volume is dead, but I had no reason to panic. And at this point, this is the only way or one of the only exceptions I'm going to move my stop loss. Pull up the discord here. I actually told the members that I've moved my stop loss to 3880 at 1118 when the market looked like this. So the reason why I moved my stop loss was the market was moving slow. We were four points away from target. And now we had new structure that got developed in the market. My original stop loss was there. However, with the new structure, my stop loss had to be below this low where I'm hovering my cursor over right now, just because of new information and new structure that the market presented itself, which I consider as new development intraday. So now my stop loss, I bumped it up. This trade can never go red on me now that I'm managing it properly. Then we pull back. And just a slow grind up the target. And I'm not even kidding. As soon as 3,900 hit, I sold my full position. I walked away. I have no business with it. I didn't want to deal with it. And we consolidated and hit the 3,913 target going into that end of day. But the lesson I want to leave you here with, because I'm going to show you the losing trade now, is I would have normally panicked on this drop right here. I will not lie about that. If I wasn't trading and I didn't have screen time and experience, and I was too attached to the money, and I'm sure this happens to a lot of you, I would have sold at this drop, no doubt in my mind, just because I didn't want to lose money or I wanted to protect my money. But because I did this and my target or stop loss did not trigger, I did not sell, I had no business to sell. Whereas the next trade I'm going to show you, I completely messed up and I lost because of it. But this analysis worked out perfectly, broke above 3870. I hope I broke down, that down pretty well. Market leading equities helped. And if you follow me on Instagram, I posted the NASDAQ analysis. A bunch of members took NASDAQ and absolutely destroyed NASDAQ, the S&P, and the market leading equities. It was a great day on Thursday, July 7th. The losing trade was a very simple one. Again, it was on the S&P 500. We had supply at 3843 and 3858. And I said it was very hard to be bullish on an upside move below these supply zones. And I was the watching the market to reject and sell off into demand zones lower. So what I really saw here and why I entered this trade was the market broke above this resistance in pre-market highs inside of a supply zone and failed to continue higher. And on the time and sales, there were very aggressive prints hitting the bid. And there was very strong continuation to the downside that really gave me confirmation to take this setup. And I got in short puts. Uh, right down here and my stop was the high my target was this demand zone at 3818 that formed overnight that bounced price two different times so now i'm in short i think market leading equities were very weak my target was the high or my target was demand and my stop was the high now the problem with this setup was three minutes before this I was telling members in the discord to be very cautious trading these conditions because of the structure that we were seeing. We were still inside of a very large balance range like this area. Um, and the market for me to have continuation, I wanted to see us break out of the balance range for a high quality setup, especially in these current market conditions. And I think this was an emotional entry because other than what I just said earlier about the tape, and the fail to stay above the high. I didn't really have everything that aligned like that just did in the last setup that was a win. So I think I forced this. I had an emotional entry. I chased the move. I should have got a little bit of a better fill about eight points higher. And my emotions, I think, let me get in the setup and I was better off avoiding it. So now I'm in the setup. I'm pretty frustrated with myself and pretty annoyed. We continue dipping down. And at this point, I think Apple was bouncing off demand or Facebook Meta was. And I was very cautious for downside continuation. In fact, I said that the market may have a bounce here at the lows. 
And once I said that and saw the market start coming up, I stopped out at this candle for a loss. And remember what I said earlier, two ways I sell a position, my target hits or my stop loss triggers. But I think I entered this trade because of my emotions that just basically botched this whole setup. And I sold before my stop loss triggered or before the target hit. And if I followed it, and even if it wasn't an emotional entry, and I did follow that analysis, look what happened. You know, we came to the high. A lot of people most likely would have stopped out inside of this little rally right here. But your stop loss never triggered. And if you listen to my advice, you probably still would have been in this trade. We put in a lower high at supply and the market kept dipping. We were consolidating for a while. But where I entered and where I exited was right here. Um, then we continued and we did hit my target and I would have got out of this position and it would have been a nice setup and we did bounce from this demand zone and we did continue to move higher, but uh, we also had FOMC that day, the minutes. And I was saying to be very cautious for chop prior to the FOMC. And I really need to see something that really stands out for me to take a setup. And I still took it. And even if I was upset and did have an emotional entry, if I followed that rule I just explained to you guys, I would not have stopped out of this and it would have been a winning trade. But because it was an emotional entry, I wanted to have no part of it. I didn't want to deal with it. And I was just frustrated with myself that I got out when I could instead of making it a very large loss. And the analysis worked out pretty well. And I'm confident that this, if you implement this, it's going to help. Like I said, be on the lookout for my next video. I'm not sure when it's going to post, um, but I talk about this more in depth. It's like a 20 minute long video. It's a lot of information in there for different possible scenarios. And uh, I did record an intro very similar to showing you this little chart here. So you might see it twice, but it's okay. I want you all to understand the point and I want to be repetitive so it, it gets in your head uh, without me telling you it. But I'm going to end the video on that note. Definitely drop a like, comment if you have any questions, and check out the links in the description below. I offer a very in-depth and educational course. It comes with access to the Discord at no extra charge, and I will be making some changes to it very, very soon. But peace out.